Welcome, everybody, to Saves Together, a podcast about playing games together, whether that means co-op or passing the controller back and forth or just playing the same game at the same time. It doesn't matter how. It only matters that it's together because... When you save together, you stay together. I'm Craig McGowan. I'm Grace. And this is episode 73. What are we talking about today? We're talking about Wildermyth. 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 That's a video game. Did you know that? It's a great game. Well, or that's the episode. We'll see, or I maybe suppose. it's not. <laughs> and that's it. And Bye. that's it. You know, I have I feel like we give away like we give away the ghost or whatever the saying is way too early every time. It's about the journey, not the destination. I'm not the kind of person that thinks spoilers make a difference in your experience of something. That's true. So it's okay if they know what we feel. And, you know, I think if you've been listening in general, you know that when I say things are great, it comes with so many caveats. I might as well be saying they're not great sometimes while I'm saying they're great. <laughs> so, yeah, so. If, if you've been here long enough, you should understand the subtext and the context and the yeah. subconscious context. and the Every word carries so much baggage. That's what I'm trying to say, including the word great. We should have baggage segment. Okay. You know the game show Baggage. I game do. Game show I put in quotes. It's not... <laughs> It's not really a game show. They, the dating there's show. There's a new version now, isn't isn't there? I don't know. I don't actually care. Uh, but so, so what we should do is we should have three baggages that we open throughout the episode. So even if we tell you at the beginning, we like this game, don't worry. You're going to hear them get progressively our biggest complaint. I feel like know? that's not really like an auditorial excitement. Well, I didn't. I wasn't thinking we would make like the bag Unless sound effect. I was thinking like we the would just say the click of the suitcase, like deal or no deal. It was more like a hypothetical, like a, uh, like a figured, theoretical bag. So it'd be like, okay, and now let's open the small one. It's like I hate the controls, and then we talk about controls. I see. It's a different format. I yeah. would say. I don't think you could fit it into our current format. Okay, what if it was just baggage about other stuff in the world <laughs> that we just, just like happen to run through? Like, <laughs> or okay, just your personal I want to say when I, you know. Here's my baggage. When I use a knife and stuff stays on it, and then that stuff gets in the next thing I'm using the knife in, like when you're making a sandwich, yeah. I hate it. Like butter? Yeah, like when there's butter in the caramel dip. <clears throat> Sometimes I'll just do it anyway. <laughs> ah, I'm just you kidding. ever experienced the butter that. in the caramel dip? <laughs> What's up? You ever experienced butter in the caramel dip? No. You ever go to use caramel dip and there's butter in there and you wonder why? I don't know what you're talking about. You're, you're acting so crazy right now. <laughs> I'm gaslighting you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we're not here to talk about baggage or butter or anything like that. We're here to talk about wilderness. 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 Uh, I do want to recommend one butter if we're going to talk about butter, and that's Dude. the olive. What is it? It's like olive oil based plant butter yeah. from Country Crock. It's very good. Very is salty. Is it Country Crock? I think it's Country it's Crock. It's so salty. It's so good. Vegan butter. Give it a shot if you haven't, and you're looking for something a little less dairy centric in your butter choice. But a little high salty, so it's kind of like Which why are you, you want. making this decision? You want it. You want it to taste delicious. Oh, yeah. Definitely it's good on bread. Good. It's good on Very toast. Good. I actually, now I don't like regular, like we have like that margarine in there. Now yeah. I, now I kind of don't like that stuff because it's like, this isn't yeah. salty enough. Yeah. But that's a problem, I think. We should, I should look into like how much salt is really in that. You should get, um, you should get checked up. Maybe you have like high cholesterol. Is probably, that what salt affects? Uh, I don't think I, I mean, I don't eat that much of this butter. I just, I know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, you never know. But you should always, everybody go get checked for high what cholesterol. You can't say that. You don't Why? get checked up because you're a hypocrite. They don't need to know that. Okay. Well, now they know. <laughs> My, the the lore behind me is that I go to the doctor every other day. <laughs> it's it's canon that you Apple go to the doctor. every other day keeps the doctor every year. You still go. You Why still don't go we talk about video games? We should probably do that. Solo time. Grace, what have you been playing by yourself without me? Well, I'm at the last boss of Metroid Dread. Wow. Is it, And this is your first Metroid, is it not? You don't have to call me out like that. I am I think it's cool. <laughs> All right, so my brother bought me Metroid Dread for Christmas because he loves this game. I've never... Yeah, you're right, okay? You're right. I've never played a Metroid game, even though I do say I love Metroidvanias, which Dude. seems... I've also never beaten a Castlevania game. Okay, wait. Actually, I take that back. Arguably, what's the one with uh, the girl? Bloodstained? Uh, Bloodstained. Arguably, that is a Castlevania game. They're all Castlevania games. Point is... This oh, wait, was... no, they're all Metroidvanias. Right. Whatever, it doesn't matter. You like that format. I do, I do. Play. That's like saying, you know, you're not allowed to listen to like... I'm gatekeeping myself. Yeah. So anyway, 
this is a great game. This is really fun. I'm really glad I played it. I'm at the final boss and I'm really enjoying it. And I was thinking like it'd be funny because my brother also told me to play Hollow Knight. I did that. I got all the way to the final boss and I never beat it. <laughs> and then, and then he, <laughs> Just never beat he the was, final boss. He was mad at me. And so it'd be funny if I also didn't beat the final boss in this Are game. Are you having trouble trying to beat the final boss? I mean, you always do, but it's not like the kind of trouble like I was having with Hollow Knight where I was like, all right, I'm done with this. Um, I'm still I'm still having fun. The bosses are really fun in, in Metroid Dread. Like I, this was like a galaxy brain moment for me, which is obvious to most people who play games. But bosses are like puzzles themselves. You know, um, good bosses are at least in Metroid Dread. They definitely not, are. So what do you mean? Because <laughs> <laughs> because you're also better at video games than me. Yeah. So if you didn't realize. <laughs> Okay, boss well, patterns is a thing? Okay, here's the thing. I've been realizing it slowly as I've been playing games. I know, I knew that so was So you a had thing. a latent talent and you just, so you, <laughs> oh my God, you're going to be too powerful because you're starting to put your brain I'm into it, it as it well, together. not just your physical, like it's not just coming out of you right. naturally. Physically, now you're thinking about it as well. You're going to be unstoppable. <laughs> you got to go to the MLG. I am slow. So I was realizing, oh, like patterns and they program. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> No, okay, I knew here's the that thing. Here's subconsciously. The funny part. Here's the funny part. I'm the opposite. I know, okay, there's patterns. So I just need to look for the patterns and then I can execute the plan. I know I have to yeah. dodge at this point and I can never do the gaming part. That's right, why I don't like right. bosses. You have a bad um So I know what's coming, but I just time. can't, it, I can't put it together. Yeah. But I think in this game particularly, it was, I was thinking about that because there's different ways to beat the bosses and you can go faster if you do certain things. And so that becomes even more, I guess it's more obvious to me that it's a puzzle. Like there was one boss where you fight the the bottom part of the stomach and then I realized, oh, I can actually jump on the attacks it's doing on the wall and reach the head faster to kit to Was that that uh, big rocket. fat yeah. like, alligator thing? Yeah. It looked just like the thing in the Splatoon 3 <laughs> kaiju thing you oh, remember that you no, saw that no yeah i hit my elbow sorry um so anyway metroid dread great game also i've been re reviving my love for otome games i beat two in clarify the past. for everyone what an otome is because, you say that every time bro i don't think i do okay you said that before it's a dating game it's a dating game um popularized in japan tokimeki memorial was like one of the first ones but um now you get them all the time here where we didn't used to. So that's great. I beat recently Cupid Parasite, which was really fun. That's the one where you are playing as Cupid, who's come down to Earth to learn what love is all about without using her bow. And so she works for a company called the Cupid Corporation. So ironic. <laughs> and she is a matchmaker. But she has to put together matches for the most five unmatchable men in the city or something and that's, that's and then also awesome. you make them all fall in love with you obviously i would be so into these if there was just one extra layer of gameplay on top of it if it wasn't just visual novel yeah know? yeah yeah i mean i really right. like persona you could take out a lot of the rpg parts well that's why ace attorney i feel like is is great for people yeah, like but you. even then i like how cool it'd be to walk around the town like in I guess, but I feel like do. that's filler I know for I'm, games like yes, that, you know? Yeah. I know that you're not there for that. Yeah, right. But that, like, what you just described sounds cool. I want to experience that. Mm -hmm. But, like, I just know me. I don't want to sit there and read for 20 hours. Well, I'm a big reader. You know No, me. I'm not. That's that's awesome. Yeah. I'm just, for, I'm jealous own. that I can't, you know, I'm envious. That you can't read, right. That I can't so, read. So, Cupid Parasite, I really enjoyed. It was also, I think, the spiciest Otome game I've played yet, which I really, we, we need more of. We need more Hold on. spice Ain't in our there Otome. there plenty of... What do you mean spice? Define spice. I mean, spice. like, we need to get into the sex. There are <laughs> so many sex games. I'm not talking about, like, hentai games. Oh. Okay, no. I'm talking about dating games with sex. It's different. Okay. It's different. Fair enough. It's different. You don't understand. So, so Cupid Parasite was good. I also played Bust of Fellows, which is a, a great name for oh, yeah. a game. Um, and that's one that, that's more, like, crime, crime-based. A lot of, like, angst and darkness. Uh, I think I like the lighter stuff, but... There's a new one coming out next week called Variable Barricade, which I'm also excited for. So I'm big on the Otome right now. And then I started Horizon Zero Dawn last night, the new one, Forbidden West. Yeah. I'm already having fun. I mean, it's an open world. It is what it is. It's exactly what you expect. And it's great. I loved the first one. So I'm already enjoying this. We were, I was watching you start it and we went through the settings and accessibility and there is a co-pilot mode, which I guess like the other, you can have a second controller that has the same exact controls. Yes. So. 
mirrored controls. So like yeah. that's an accessibility thing, but also like a little kid, like if you were like, just jump when I tell you, or, I mean, that might be hard, but you know, you but could you come could up with some. take over if they really start, it's like, okay, back down, little Timmy. Yeah. Like and you then... wouldn't even have to pass the control. You could be watching someone play, but like, you want me to do this quick? Yeah. And then you just have the, you know. I like that. It's, it's, it's great. Just a little nifty little thing. Uh, you watched the All Axis access the publisher that yes. makes otome games right? and i was having a great time was it because good? It was, i wanted to watch it but was it all it's unnecessary for you to watch yeah. it it's just it was just funny because everyone in the chat is just screaming out otome boy names and then when blazing what's it called blazing fists i don't even blazing strike the whatever the fighting game is they're they're doing the other people in chat are like that's what i'm here for it's like just so different fan is it, bases is the fighting game like otome Tomoe boy? No, 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 no. It's like just a pixel. I think it's oh. a retro pixel fighting game they're remaking. I think. Okay. I didn't It'd pay be cool attention. If they would I'm not pit there for these that. boys together. Now that and then would whoever be you something. love more has boosted stats. <laughs> that would be something. I mean, that's how Fire Emblem kind of works. That's, that's true. That is kind of. <laughs> um. Okay, and one more game I'm playing. Just I've just been playing a lot of games, but uh, Jimmy and the Pulsating Mass, which is on the other Jimmy. like genre of games I really like. Call, calling them mother-like, I guess, or earthbound-like games. Well, um, so if Metroidvania is Metroid and Castlevania... I like Metroidvania, mother-like games, and well, Otome. <laughs> if it's mother-like, but it's also earthbound-like, I know those are the same thing. Is there another original classic staple so we can combine People it? People call them Dark Souls. Dark, There's Dark Soul-likes at this point. What? Not, not this game. No, Wait, I'm talking about this. We should me? come up with the genre. If a if a Metroidvania, I'm coming out with the genre. I know, and so I was saying we should combine Mother and Earthbound to like oh. Motherbound or Earther. No, or... I think we should just call them Mother likes because Earthbound like is uh, is like too much of a mouthful. Mother esque, Mother. Mother like. I I just don't like doing dash like. It's so me neither. But like, there's no other way. Because I, I, I was fun thinking to invent about how things. it's not just an RPG. It's there's it has a specific uh, requirement so at least for well, me. Well, so what I was going to argue is Undertale. Kind of deserves. I know that it's also just being a. It's mother-like. become its own thing. Though. But what if it was it's a mother not a mother-like. tale? This is a mother tale. Yes, sure. That's yeah. what. That's what ever. What was it called? That game I Underbound. Played? What about Everhood. Underbound? Everhood. Yeah, Everhood is is like Undertale. It's a. Did you talk about Everhood? Because it's been a couple episodes since we've um, done no. a solo time. No, I didn't talk about Everhood. I played so many games. Everhood was really fun. I loved it because you were playing it. We have nice it's a rhythm game, now, rhythm the, game the on Steam, but it's uh, very similarly looking to Undertale. Clearly inspired aesthetically, at least, and uh, writing wise. I did not like the writing almost at all, but the the gameplay is really fun. The music it's, was and so enjoyable and the music's for me. great. Yeah, I. I think it's really cool. Visuals are cool. I just like the writing was like, okay, I, I see what you're trying to do here, but I no thank you. Um, anyway, Jimmy and the Pulsating Mass is really good so far. It, it's I'm enjoying it. But I was thinking like when these mother likes uh, succeed for me is when they're from the point of view of a kid because all the quirky stuff fits. And I was I was wondering, what, okay, there was another game you were playing that... Everyone like says quirky things and you're like, this is unnecessary. I'm trying to think of what the game Ooblitz. That was. Ooblitz, that was it. Yes. Yes. Okay. Or uh, that's so, not the only one. Ooblitz is a big one though. Cause that's what I was, that's the one I was thinking of. Like where the NPCs say things no, and they're all, all quirky. The bad, the Bob Dylan thing. That too. Yes. Yeah. Um, that's a s- artful escape. Yeah. So anyway, my point here is I think the quirky dialogue one-liners work so much better when it's from a child's point of view. Because it just fits more, and when it's from when you're an adult in the game, it's like why is everyone acting <laughs> crazy as well? It's just yeah. it really takes you out of the world. But when you're playing Earthbound or Undertale or Jimmy and the Pulsating Mass, and you're playing from the point of view of like an eight year old, it's like yeah, that 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 makes sense. That that tracks. It kind of reminds me of in in Indivisible when we would talk to the the Kickstarter backer oh, characters, the and they worst. would just be like, "I love Milky," and you're like, "Okay, what to be does fair, that though, mean?" I also think. Did I wonder if the Kickstarter bikers also wrote the dialogue for their that's characters? What I, that's, that's that was my impression. It was so that was that was its own problem. But that's like a because that wasn't that's just almost like, passable because it's like eh right it's their Kickstarter things. But right, I, I I know what you're saying. It's like when every character is weird. Right. Like, I, I understand isn't... what the writers are trying to do, and like it's very valid. It's like you know trying to pull you in with interesting, funny things that people say. But I I don't know. I think everyone needs to take it back a notch unless it kind of fits um the the point of view the voice of the the protagonist you know so good game jimmy and the pulsating mass if you're interested in like undertale amori earthbound those kinds of games that i like uh you might like that mother tales 
Mother Tales. I mean, Undertale is its own thing at this point. Like, but I think they're so similar that they deserve to be. Well, it's inspired. It's heavily inspired by Earthbound. Right. Oh, and there's a new game coming out. New RPG that's not new from Japan. Live a live. Yes. But I'm really excited for. I'm excited to watch you play some of that. because <laughs> I'm excited to watch you play <laughs> that game. Uh, a lot of the stories. It looks like a really much better Octopath trailer. It does. It looks like a, like Octopath. Oh, my God. I don't even want to talk. Octopath was so disappointing to me. It's like insane. That was one of those games where I wish I had known now I should have dropped it way earlier. Like the, the me now is not the me then. Right. Anyway, this game looks like, yes, a better Octopath kind of in that it's like all these different characters who have their own stories. But in Live a Live, it's totally different um, time periods. So you play as like a caveman or a robot in the future or a cowboy or uh, a martial artist. It looks so cool. I'm really yeah. excited. Uh, OK, that's enough for me. What about you? What what games have you been playing in 2022? Well, I think, I don't know. Uh, I didn't even talk about Pokemon, but I'm going to let you I, talk so about was, Pokemon. All I'm going to talk about is Pokemon. So I beat Shining Pearl. I forced myself through. And I can't remember if I talked about this or not, but didn't I forced we beat myself that last through year? Shining we, we Pearl. We beat this last year, right? We didn't really talk about it, though. I don't think I talked about it, and I may, it may have bled into this year. But I just wanted to say that I didn't really love it, and I felt like meh. And it kind of soured my beginning of Legends, so I started Pokemon Legends Arceus. And in the beginning, I was like, yeah, I don't know. I just did a Pokemon, and this is just Pokemon. I know it's different, but I kind of don't feel great about Pokemon right now. And then I got to the, the coastal area, the beach area, and something clicked. The Cobalt I felt Coast. it, like, click, and I just loved the game, and I haven't stopped playing. I'm now trying to get, I'm trying to fill the Pokedex. I'm in the post game. I'm fighting all the Legends. Like You killed Giratina. I killed Gear. Well, uh, yeah, I, I Gear, beat it. Is it Giratina or Giratina? I Giratina, don't know. Right? Pokemon names are so like. It does not matter, actually. To me, I've always said Giratina. Yeah, I think you're right. That sounds. Boring. But I also always said Arceus. And I also always I said think, Gif. And I also always said. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's Arceus, I think. I think it is Arceus. And that sounds better to me. It's whatever it sounds better to me that that's the objectively right one. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I man, I think that game's really good. I hope they. I miss the eggs and I miss the breeding. Oh my God, I forgot about eggs. And I eggs. miss trading. <laughs> he says like, I miss the breeding. <laughs> well, I do because I would tr I would breed for a good like. You can still trade. Nature. You can still trade. Yeah, but right. But, but because the there's same. no eggs, you can't trade me a rowlet. Yeah. So but the only way to get a rowlet, because I didn't start with one, it. is to go and find a time space warp or whatever they're called. Oh, is that what it is? Yes. I was wondering. And it's a rare thing. So it's already a rare event to happen. I and then read. you have to just get lucky that there's a Rowlet in it. And I don't love that. It would be cool if you could just give me an egg. At least you have a lot of Pokemon to catch. So while you're running around, just keep an eye out for them. Yeah. I read with, from Serebii that they happen every like 45 minutes. Yeah, I'm going to... I'm at the point now. This is what I used to do with older Pokemon games. And it's been a while. I'm at the point now where exactly like you just said, I'm looking up the mechanic and yeah. planning around it. I'm writing lists of guys I need to catch and where. Mm -hmm. Where I haven't done that in quite some time. EV training is the last time I really did something like that in Sword and Shield. Yeah, I like a lot of the changes they made in Arceus. I think, yes. I think that it was fun for me. I just, I by the end, I, I didn't care. And I think part of it is I'm 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 kind of like falling out of it with Pokemon big time. <laughs> and I, 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 a big part, a big reason is the writing. I just don't care about yeah. it. And I care more about writing these days than a lot of other stuff. So that's all it is, you know. And the yeah. gameplay is not fun enough to keep me anymore. I like the gameplay. I don't. There's a lot I still don't like, though, like about this, but it's a step in the right direction to make it a little more engaging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's funny because I think I was the opposite of you. I enjoyed it way more at the beginning than by the end. Yeah, I it, I didn't. I wasn't loving it. I do I, love how easy it is to catch shinies. I have like three shinies on my team. I haven't I, seen a single one. I haven't really that's looked. That's crazy. Though. But yeah, I, you there was you a magic carp. There was a magic carp breakout or whatever. Yeah. And I went to it. I was like, this, oh, I want one so dude. bad. But no, I didn't get one. Okay, wait, but I think a red Gyarados is a quest. Might be. That's, okay. That's, just that's in the other games. You don't so need I a red magic carp. It's a uh, orange magic carp. Okay, but I'm saying. <laughs> um, and then I played Kill It with Fire, which is a game where there's a you're in like a your bedroom and there's a bunch of spiders and you have to kill them however you want and it it really <laughs> it really uh, escalates. You start with like a clipboard and you smack it with a clipboard, and then you get a uh, lighter like a lighter and an aerosol spray can, and so you burn them. And then you get pistols, and then you're getting rocket launchers and grenades, and you go through levels just killing spiders and causing chaos. I think it's a phenomenal game. Uh, I think everybody should try this game. 
It, okay. It's it's such a good the evolution, like I was saying, and and how it progresses, and just doing the levels. There's so many secrets. Like play, kill it with fire. I'm telling you. There's a couple of versions. I don't know. I played it on Steam. Is uh, it on Switch too, I or think, just Steam? I think it is on console. This might be a really good mouse and keyboard only game. There's a lot of aiming at tiny little spiders. Uh, okay. You know? All right, that's good to know. Yeah, um, it looked it looks it looks goofy and fun. I had so much goofy, fun. Goofy fun like, time. I wish I had played it. I mean, games are good. Can, can good that games count for my game of the year this year? <laughs> it's just so good. I was thinking about that for Metroid Dread. I was like, if I played this last year, I would have it would have been up there for yeah. me because if I it's so good. Played Kill It With Fire when it came out. I would at least have mentioned it. You know. Mm -hmm. So we'll see though. Maybe I'm putting it on anyways. That's how much. That's how much I liked it. Uh, and then there was two news things that came out quick. I just wanted to mention as cool co-op things before we start talking about Wildermyth. East f uh, nine. East nine co-op. Yeah, what's IX? That's nine, right? Yes. <laughs> Correct. Uh, there was like a co-op trailer, and the co-op looked really cool. Uh, uh, I'm still like on the fence about that because it's 3D. It's just like a 3D open world space, kind of. And yes. so I'm nervous like how the camera works. I'm not saying we're necessarily going to play this. Oh, is it separate? Is it like an online situation? That's, I don't know the details. I just thought it looked great to like run around and explore. Yeah. It's one thing like, like Xenoblade. I love Xenoblade, but can you imagine? Like, can we just run around together? Like, I, I'm not looking for MMOs. Those are too MMO-y. Mm -hmm. But I would love more co-op JRPGs where it's like, or just RPGs. I'd love I at least someone up. to try it more. Like, imagine know? I send, we, you decide to go off and get the sword quest, and I decide to go off and get the shield quest, and then we come together, you know? Yeah. Like, it'd be cool to split up, come together, and make plans like that. I wonder if even you could develop something that... Um does something interesting with co-op and writing. So if you go do a quest and you get to see different cutscenes and then we share information to try to like yeah. figure out a story, you know, like cool. almost like maybe solve a mystery or something. I think that'd be so cool. Be interesting, right? And then the other one was this game called The Anarchrusis, which is kind of like a Left 4 Dead, but with 70s alien looking things. They have, that there was, they were talking about the behind the scenes stuff and what's going on with the game. There are no difficulty options because the game is automatically scaling it based on your performance mm -hmm. and it's a four-player co-op thing and it, they specifically shouted out difficulty versus intensity and oh. i thought that was funny because that's something we've been talking about as an app like they totally they years. listen to us they definitely they listen to us and like, that's idea. right there are two different things yeah. but they talked about the balance but the, the the algorithm or the ai is calculating like do we want it to be more difficult but drop intensity and yeah. you know and i think it just shows like that's interesting you know that's a important part of this like something can be intense and not difficult right and something can be difficult and it doesn't make it any more intense we could make like one of those um charts that has like an x and y axis and you could put like games on either yeah. side of the line you know actually that would that sounds fun <laughs> I, you're gonna I, do it wouldn't, it? it's like kind of unimportant data but it would be fun It'd to be try fun. to do fun to try to think it's almost of like a games. tier list like making a tier list except a right scale you could do it with all the co-op games we've played yeah that's what okay so, this yeah. has been a long talk so Let's well, you on. know, this is our first um, solo talk of the year. It, tr it is, actually. Um, so Wildermyth. let's get into the, uh, let's talk about Wildermyth. <music> Developed by World Walker Games and published by World Walker Games, Wildermyth was released on June 15th, 2021 for the PC and the Nintendo Switch. We played it on PC. With mouse wait, and it's released for Nintendo Switch? Yes, I don't suggest that necessarily. Uh, wait a second, are you sure? Are, maybe that that check fact check me, but I mean, I, I think just, it. I, just I thought it was it announced for it, but maybe it recently came out because I think when we talked about I'm fairly this, certain it came out on June fifteenth. It says a Nintendo Switch version is currently in development. Oh, I got lied to. I'm sorry, everybody. It was released for on yeah in June on in Windows. Okay. For Windows only, yeah. Okay, sorry. But it's coming to Switch. That said, I don't know if this is a Switch game. Um, it's a little reading heavy. I guess it's not that small of text. On January 6th, there's a news article that says you'll be waiting at least a year for the Switch one. Oh, wow. So, there Never you mind. go. Sorry. I actually think this would be fun on Switch. I disagree. I don't you know might why, be right, actually. Why you would say that. Because uh, it's very click heavy. To, but not like Diablo click heavy, but like oh, it's see. just a lot of click in specific spots and move in specific yeah, things. You just use your cursor. Uh, yeah, I'm it'll be a little slower on Switch. It might yeah, be a good Switch Yeah, it will be game, slower. Though. I agree with you there. 
Uh, can you explain for me, like, the genre? Like, what's the gameplay? This what are we doing? This is sort of like um, a D&D inspired RPG. A, t- a turn based strategy. Kind of board game y looking. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a, it is very much like a D&D combat system. Uh, you take turns and you, you attack create things on a grid. Yeah, they have attributes and they have, there's only three classes. There's just, um, they kind of with mystic, uh, uh oh my god there's, there's like mystic a, there's like, warrior and an archer i yeah. mean rogue rogue right whatever an arrow shooter a magic <laughs> user and a sword user Basically. and then you kind of tweak them as you go but yeah we'll get into that yeah uh the co-op category i think it's accomplice because of some decisions made around how the gameplay goes um because if you don't have an it's like if you weren't didn't think about it i'll explain why yeah uh no i think i agree with you because you don't have to i don't have to do anything anything. right yeah that's true you have to communicate who's going to control who yeah you can control it's not turn-based there isn't like a speed stat that decides your turn order i will say at the start turn we just all go the start of the campaign you can lock characters to players yes i i never figured out if you could lock characters to players you recruit halfway through the campaign or not and mm-hmm. I just, we just didn't. We so just, you, yeah. anyone could control them. I just don't know. Maybe that's an option I, I couldn't find. So, but I kind of like the way it goes for a certain reason that we'll talk about when we get to controlling like the characters. But it is, I literally could just take, I could watch something while she, like, yeah, right. That's you know, true. That's I could, true. I could go make dinner. It's one and of she the could more like the battle and- involved accomplice games where a lot of the accomplice right. games we talk about you're s- more limited usually it's a kind of negative slightly negative connotation that we would call something accomplice i guess it's accomplice the difference between accomplice and supplemental is that supplemental you're just the same accomplice you uh, in supplemental you do have to do something right whereas an accomplice you can stop doing things and still quote unquote play the game right, right. so i think that's the big difference here so in right. this game he doesn't have to do anything but and you don't I, unless, have to do anything either. Well, uh, the, one, the one reason that you do have to do things is because I lock your guy to one character. Yeah. So accomplice with a s- asterisk, I would say, depending on the settings that you choose. I, d- I think this is a good accomplice game. Yeah. When yeah. I, if I ever get around to making the primers of co-op categories and like trying to explain them more and give examples, this is a good one. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of player decisions yeah. as far as that goes whereas in like mario Mario's odyssey yeah. you can just be a ha- I love that we always think of cappy <laughs> all but i can do is Yoshi, be cappy yoshi's woolly world or whatever we played that one game where no yoshi's woolly world wasn't like that. i would just jump on your back and be like all right you oh yeah <laughs> you're, was, you're up i love yoshi's woolly world okay co-op factors type of co-op couch online Split screen, same screen. It's only online. Only online. There's no same screen. This is a perfect. You could do same screen by just no. I don't passing think the mouse back screen. and forth though. Yeah, that's true. Um, um, so I had to play on my laptop, which was annoying to me. So yeah, that we, we don't play a lot into, of online computer games for that reason. Yeah, we only have one computer between us. We have one Windows right. computer. Yeah. Um, we have a Mac that I use for work, and then I have we have laptops, but like there's also nowhere to good sit to play on a Mac laptop for long term, so it's it's not a great situation for yeah. that. I think one day if we have like two Windows setups, which we will, then it will be better. But you know, we live in New York City, okay? We only have so much space. Right. Someday like I want, want just that. like the double, like two desks next to each other type situation. I think mm, all the TikTok gaming couples, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the that'll be us. Separate mode or full? And I actually put question marks for my answer to this because I don't it's know. The, it's the it's the same thing. You play the same campaigns, I think. When you set up the game, though, did you? You have to select. Can you just kick me first. out whenever? Could you? No, re, could you, you open can't. that game? I can't kick you out whenever. I don't think. Can, Actually, it, I don't know. can you open our game and play right now, or would I, I need know. to be connected? I don't think you need to be connected, though. Okay. I think I could have just kept going. So we kind of don't have an answer for that, except for our experience, it was a fully co-op mode because it was kind of it's kind of like you're running campaigns, like D and D campaigns. So I think you can have multiples going, and yeah. you can jump into a different that's story true. that's happening. That's true. Um, but I think essentially it's the same gameplay. It's not like you know they have a separate co-op mode. So yeah, full full thing. Right. But I was just trying to f- just figure out, like, can you kick me out and then control my thing? And but, That, I really don't know. Yeah. I feel like probably, since I'm the, like, 
master of the game as far as like it's my save right i probably could you'd like but you couldn't kick me out i bet yeah uh control scheme how did we play this thing and what did it control like and mouse and, and mouse and keyboard. keyboard and sometimes it was a little bit weird yo so this is i have a lot this is the most notes i've ever had for like the control section buckle um, up get so ready buckle up controlling everyone at once so when it's our turn anyone can move like i was saying there's no speed there's no turn order it's just it's our turn everyone moves at any time which is a little bit hectic but, to be fair, also, this isn't, like, necessarily a control thing. It's more like gameplay. But, yeah, go I ahead. just consider it how we're controlling the character. Well, that, that, yeah, that's around. a separate thing. But, yes. So, yes. whatever. I just put it in here. Okay, it's fine. My bad. Fine. Let's, let's go to the gameplay I, no, factor. No, 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 it's Wait, fine. oh, wait. We don't have one of those. Weird. Oh, well, it's a good place to put it. I'm just <laughs> making sure people know. It's not like the mouse is, like, borked or something. Yeah, correct. Okay, go ahead. So, it, it's a little bit hectic, but it solves my problem with turn-based co-op things where I'm busy taking my turn. So I'm not really thinking about the mistakes I think you're making. And I, I emphasize what? I think you're making. Wait. When I play co-op board games and someone's, it's someone's turn, it's so easy, or, or any co-op game that's turn-based, it's so easy to just tell them what to do. You have control problems. Many people do. I've, play, <laughs> I've been in situations where I'm being told what yes, to do yes, on my yes, turn. Right. And it's like, yo, it's my turn. I understand there's an optimal strategy and you see it, but like, I just want to make my moves for That's me. what I'm telling you about fucking monster rancher man just let me smack my little guy around Correct. that's my choice yes i understand this I'm this so is why i am acknowledging that this solves that a little bit because i'm busy trying to figure out what i'm gonna do and i'm not really paying attention totally to what you're doing Interesting. We'll, we'll talk about it the solves strategy it in a way of like you're a horse with blinders on yeah <laughs> It doesn't solve it like in your brain. It's right. just, it just but, like, I can't see. I'm not looking. Like, sure, that's a control thing. Absolutely. I'm acknowledging it's not good for me. Like, yeah. I'm acknowledging that's not a good thing I do, but it is a frustrating thing. Like, yeah, yeah. when it's like, why would you attack that guy? You clearly were next to this guy, right? Um, What's so interesting cool. is like, I feel like you don't act like that in life, though. I don't know why it's a game because thing. Because in board you. games specifically, I can see the strategy. That, this We've is like how this. in real life I can't lie, but in games I can lie so much better than you. And, and you're I can't the lie. Opposite. Like if we play Among Us or something, I cannot lie. I don't know. I, That's it's, so I just interesting. Make jokes, like but... why games almost like enact a different part of your personality. Maybe Isn't that's, that weird? Maybe that's uh that's where I release those energies. The energies you can't. Yeah, it's like finally I get to lie. Like this is so fun. I never I don't I would never lie in real life, but like this is my time. It's almost and I like I lie acting, all the time. Maybe. So <laughs> I, I'm like, I don't want to lie. I want to actually tell the truth for once in my life. For once. <laughs> um, double clicking. Uh, we ran into the situation where like you would click play. We're controlling the same screen and the menus. Sometimes if I click, okay, it clicks. Okay. For you. Like that makes the menu go away. Yeah. I think and it's sometimes a it doesn't do that. It's definitely not clear. So there are times where I'm like, I don't want to hit enter because I think that she might be reading it. And then like moves will start happening behind it. I'm like, oh, sorry. That was one of those ones that I just, it's just for me, I guess. Yeah. That was very unclear. Yeah. Um, and then there's a play and pause when we're moving around on the overworld map. There's like an overworld map and then you go into battles and you do the turn-based thing. And like if, if I click the play and then you went to click the play, now you just paused it and it's like, oh, oh, I'm oh, sorry. Oh. And it just means you have to communicate. It's not really a problem. Yeah, it's a it's little interesting in battles because we have to be more careful. Like, yeah. it's like you just went, but you sh but maybe it would have been better if I went first, did this, and then you did that. Right. And I'm trying to remember in Divinity Original Sin. That was turn. Were it's we my locked? turn. It's your turn. It's my turn. It's your turn. We were turn. definitely locked to yes. turn order, right? Okay, depending on our character's yeah. speed or whatever. And that It's was almost easier. easier. Yeah, because it's like, okay, we're Now we're, we're going to talk about it. You're watching me. Yeah. You know, and this is what I was saying. We worked in that case we worked you. together on yeah. like what our characters did and then in this case we're kind of we have to see the whole board but we're also and this is our choice of how we played it exactly. kind of just thinking about how our characters are playing yes so i would be like we would recruit another character and i'll be like okay i'm gonna manage that character yeah because it just makes it easier for co-op difficulty sake but it also makes it harder because it's like oh well i didn't know you could do that and you just did this and it's like now we're fucked you right. know but that's on us for not yeah, that's on us. Clearly. I think it's interesting. It's, I, interesting. it's an interesting challenge yeah. as a turn-based RPG goes that we haven't had to do before. So something that happens, though, because of this, and I think this is actually bad, this hurts the game a bit, 
if I'm trying to move my ranger around and I'm looking at the map and I'm hovering over my skills and I'm reading what the skills do and I'm trying to decide what my move is and you make a move or an attack, it, it pops stops me out. You. It yeah, shows I me the camera moving and it's like, oh, I was doing math in my I head. I wonder if they could fix that because that, that doesn't really seem like a bug, but I don't like it because yeah. I'll be like using my mystic trying to look at things too and then it's mm -hmm. like, oh, he just moved. So I the guess... The mystic is a it. very heavy like thinking about it yeah one. like that's my favorite it's my favorite class yeah, it's so fun what does the mystic do Tell the, them mystic the mystic is really it feels really unique in this game but essentially you're what's i think is it interface interfuse you're interfusing with objects on the map so on the battleground there's like a table stacks of paper a bag a tree a rock whatever it is and you can interfuse with any of these things depending on where you are and each of those things have different um attacks they can do and different ranges so it's it's so fun to like um look around and like oh find a tree okay it can grapple and then i'll or i'll find a saw and it can explode and you can do a lot of damage as a mystic but you basically like stay behind and like possess objects to do stuff for you it's really fun and, and also like well, as your mystic levels up you can like more um focus towards like natural things so you're better with the trees or or you focus on metal things so you're better with with medals um it's cool i think it's really unique and and the gameplay in this game i think is really addicting the yeah. battles are addicting battles are very fun yeah relatively other than that interfusing thing the rest are pretty straightforward pretty yeah but yeah you have like a tanky fun. thing and, and a ranger rogue like you know that kind of thing just like uh i think i wish there were more classes though yeah i do wish there's a little more variety but the mystics enough for me that i it feels like always interesting and different as much as we we, we beat um the first campaign and we got halfway through the second campaign and the first campaign was three acts the second and the rest of them are five acts yeah the, so it took us like we would do like one or two at one act a session which would take like two to three hours right so the the structure of the game is pretty cool yeah you are going through time this is something this is what I love about this game. You start your campaign with three and you characters. guys are 10, whatever. You're 18 years old. You're all at 20 years old. Then you finish the act. 10 years passes and your characters slightly evolve. They get gray hairs. They get wrinkles. When there are events that can happen in the game that change them. And there's a lot of these. And this is the, this is the absolute best part about this game. It's kind of, it kind of picks random events. It seems, um, and each event story thing that happens at every every turn, basically outside of combat, there's a new story before combat. A story plays yeah. after combat. A story plays while you're building things on the map. A story plays. And those are picked randomly. And they're, the author is credited, which I think is pretty cool, which kind of also implies that maybe you can get more. Mm -hmm. like you could download more well there's things. so much more gameplay we haven't even yeah. are writing at least so i but, feel, feel like we have touched all the gameplay yeah but the, there's just a lot of campaigns yeah the but there's so many options we haven't touched all of the things that can happen because i looked it up because right, i was right. curious the characters can become animals the characters really? can evolve you know how we got that thing on our face the shard like yeah. you can have that take over your whole thing. You can well, you can turn I into knew. a tree character. Like you can I, well, get pets. Well, I have my one. The one of the characters in the campaign now is turning into a tree. Right, both Slowly. her legs like, are roots. So that we got the our leg was screwed up in the first camp, the first act, and then the second act it has spread to our second leg. I do like that it permanently affects the appearance of the character, yeah. and so it's it's really cool. And then one of the characters it's touched by stars, and like her hair turned blue. Yeah. And her now her like arm is like celestial blue and glowing. It's really and they're sick. getting a, a powers based on one of this. your characters had wings at some point. Dude, I don't even remember why. You can become a crow. There's a crow people. <laughs> that's sick. I really really like that about this game. Yeah, I think um, that's really that's really fun. That's and eventually like they die or retire. Right, and they and have they, kids. They can have kids with each other, or kids with just like some. At some point, where they're like, "Oh, your kid's ready to fight," and it joins your party. Yeah. And it's it's really cool. I and like that part of it. So, because of this and how modular it all is, or what is that the right word? I don't know. The graphics have to be pretty simple, and they're kind of like two D paper craft. I sort like of. I like the graphics. I, for me, the graphics grown on were me. not doing it. the The characters grew on me because once I understood why they have to be like this, because they're so piece based lego based you know yeah but the maps like the flat i like the way that to... all the like the monsters look really cool to me yeah I think those it's cool. like looking at a 2d character it, it's fine it isn't i like ugly. it more than he does i think I it's a taste like it. thing a yeah, little bit it's definitely a taste thing. <laughs>
Um, okay, that was control scheme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, We're at 40 minutes. Before. Progression. Eh, um, whatever. It is what it is. It's fine. It's still going to be a little bit of a long episode. Okay, progression is uh, It's kind of what we game. just talked about, actually. Yeah. Yeah. You're evolving time. You're progressing time. You're leveling as you as you beat monsters. You get um sort of like a dice roll of, of abilities to choose from every time you level up, which is fun, but you yeah. get to choose between like four uh yeah and you get weapons and armor you can craft at the end of each act if you have enough materials and you just sort of also pick them up sometimes so that's also a permanent uh looking thing on your guy which i think every rpg need to be at least let me see the weapon i understand that's sometimes the body won't change but it this one though. has both no it, it should, should. i that's the that's the shit in rpgs i think you need to have because yeah. an rpg is all about like developing a cool badass character that was the problem with marvel's avengers there was loot it's a loot game but the characters don't change you pick up new rib cages for the hulk and it's like it's just a thing I'm you sorry equip. a rib cage yeah exa- right it's like his gamma inside of him and it's like how would you see it though to be you don't fair see- well that's what i'm saying it should be you got new armor yeah you should right. like Oh, I see. I get it because those characters are specific designs, right? <laughs> right. They probably don't but like. But if it's a loot like game, it. I want to see my loot. Totally, I agree completely. Shared... In Divinity, yeah. could you see that stuff? Yes, though? I wouldn't have played it. I wouldn't love it if you couldn't. Oh, okay. A big <laughs> reason I loved it is because you could touch everything. Yeah, that's so fun. Shared loot or XP. Yeah, every it's all shared. Yeah, but it seems like um, it varies based on certain things. I mean, yeah, it's shared, but the characters get it at a different rate, the depending char- on how many monsters they kill and stuff. If they're in combat, they all get eight XP or whatever. Really? Everyone but then the why field, sometimes some of them have more XP than the others? I don't because know. Because I think others weren't on maybe quests that happened, yeah. like story-based things. Right, that's true. Uh, if they died, then so they left combat. Yeah, right, that's true. Um, oh, if they died and leave combat, they don't get EXP for that fight? I don't believe so. Okay. They don't we actually never... die, you get to pick. So if they die okay, in combat... They, they can die, though. You real. get to pick. Do they die... No, if they die again, they die for real. That's what I'm telling you. You don't have a choice. Once you've I saw a streamer left play it. the battle yes. and you come back in now, if you die, you're dead forever. Yes. If well, you die the second time, okay. you do not get the choice of being maimed. The so, first yeah. time, you get to get maimed and then you yes. get a hook hand or whatever. And it's like there's the evolution. That's I watched that some streamers play this before you had ever mentioned it to me. And yeah, they played a harder difficulty. And, uh, and for the first times, they, they had no choice also. So sometimes they could be maimed. Sometimes they just know you have to die and you could oh. choose between exploding or like some other thing. But either way, you died permanently, which I think is interesting. We played at a normal difficulty, not. Yeah. Or did we play easy? We play, I, think, I think we played a normal. I think we played normal. We were like, OK, we'll go down easy if, if we like are annoyed. And Anything. I feel like difficulty wise, it felt very fair. Yes. There were some times where we got frustrated, but I feel like it was also kind of on us. Um, so it, it was a good difficulty for us. Yeah, it was never that hard. Difficulty. If anything, it was a little slightly too easy, but I liked, I like when things are too easy. Okay. Me too. So I like when it's easy, but still feels like you did good. Yeah, it exactly. It feel like exactly. you're just walking That's through. That's the some, ideal you know? difficulty. Yeah. I'm playing Jimmy in the pulsating mass and I'm on, it, on the default difficulty and you can go to easy mode and I still haven't because it's still fun enough to like get close and then win. I, I do like that. So. When I start Horizon Forbidden West, I'm trying to decide. Just be easy. That game if is dropping easy. to easy though no, you don't will mean that I don't use as many abilities and stuff, which I know is like what makes that game fun. Like if you don't if need I'm to drop easy, easy and all I do game, is stab. I'm telling you, you don't need to. We'll see. You'll I don't want to use I'm not the looking abilities. for a challenge. Okay, yeah. Because I'm not of looking the for way... a challenge at all. I just want to see these monsters and stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, I think I think start on normal and then you can drop whenever you need yeah. to. But I generally the first game was not hard at all, and I still use all the abilities, so because they're fun. Yeah. And as you get loot in this game, to quickly wrap up the loot section here, you pick who it goes to. And so that's mm-hmm. you know, like in our communication factor, you we gotta to talk. Decide. Like who should have this? Who makes the most sense to get this thing we just got? And you cannot trade. As far as we can tell. Yeah, I don't think you can like. Um, so once I give later. the axe to my axe guy, <laughs> right? We can't is decide. Not we should like have. divinity. Yeah. Where you I kind of do wish you could trade, but I guess I get it. it. It forces communication and thinking and stuff. Yeah, and it's not like that big a deal. It, it's it, not. Did, it never felt like a like a huge thing if we fucked that up. Yeah. Friendly fire. Can you hurt each other in any way? You can. Yeah. Sure. Like I could throw a fire in your direction. Yeah. But nothing. You're not like doing it. 
without knowing you're about no, to No, right, right, you know. Like, like the mystic has a thing on a lot of the objects that explode, and I can make it so it explodes in your face, but I wouldn't yeah. do that. But yes, I was so yes. using a ranger that would throw a poison thing, and it's yeah. basically a grenade, and it would splash damage, and it would hit you if I didn't aim it right. Right. Which is great. It's the, the ideal friendly fire, where mm -hmm. it's like, you can if, if you, you screw to. up, or if you have to. <laughs> right. Interruptive actions, I kind of already touched on it in controls, where... Yeah, the you big making one your move would knock that. me out of my move. That was the biggest one. Everything else felt like fair enough. Yeah. But that one, even the closing the menus when you read too fast, like fine. That That's slightly, but I think the worst was when I'm trying to like range the field with my mystic looking for stuff. I click on something and then all of a sudden all my all my work is like yep. gone. That and the feels mystics, unnecessary. The turns were, de you could you could tell that it was the mystic's turn because it was taking a lot longer. Because And that's not a problem. I, I know exactly Often why you're doing Often I would it. just be like, I'm just going to wait till he goes and then go, which yeah. I don't think is the right attitude to have because it's like, okay, but yeah, but what if me going is better? That's why you have to communicate. Yeah. Difficulty of co-op. We talked about it a second ago. It's... Well, the difficulty of the game, but yeah. difficulty of the co-op, I think it's pretty difficult. It's the same... Yeah. I mean, all it does is add the layer of having to talk about your plan. Yeah. So, you know, it's difficult in that way if you don't have good... Right. If you if like you're like me, you don't have good impulse control. I just want to attack. I'm just gonna swing right now. Yeah, that's a purposeful difficulty. There's also some like difficulty just as far as the way it's like I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to always talk about everything you have to do. Sometimes we don't want to do that. That right. it's a high communication game. For the most part, though, it didn't backfire often. That's like, true. You'd be like, you shouldn't have done that, and I'd be like, yeah, you're right. I probably shouldn't have. But nothing, it, nothing terrible happened. The nice thing about playing on a lower, on a like a more normal difficulty. Yeah. If we played on hard, then it would have been more intense, which makes sense. So strategy or tactics? It's yeah, we talked about that. The a lot. whole thing. Um, we would be like, you know, okay, you have your warrior go in, fight him, and then try using the ranger. And if that doesn't work, then I'll use the mystic. You know that kind of thing. Yep. We, we would talk a lot about turn order was the big thing. Percentages on attacks uh, seemed different. Uh, not, sorry, no, not on attacks. On chance to, there would be things at the bottom of the screen, like after story, or like when we start battles, the percentages would be different. It'd be like 40% attack, 50% defend. You're talking you, about you know the what? story options. Yeah, the story options. I don't even know what that was. The percentages were different to between the two screens, because I remember saying it out loud and they were wrong. What was I, that about? I have no idea what that even meant. There's um, no explanation for yeah. what those percentages mean or why they were different or what they did. So. And the last factor we have, communication, we've been talking about a lot. This is a great game for that. Yes. It, it, Which makes sense, because if you're interested in playing a maybe a like D and D like game and you don't have someone to DM, like this is a great this is a great game to facilitate that kind of thing. Yeah, this is like one foot in the door of In the D and D door. Yeah. Um one thing that did happen was Fen and Gate. Now this is when I for the sure made about? my two moves. I moved my two <laughs> characters, and then all of a sudden, your character that you were controlling named Fennin didn't have any moves left. And yeah. I was positive I did not move that character, and you were positive you didn't move that character. One of us screwed up. My guess is one of us me. accidentally pressed weight on that character. Yeah, or something. So yeah. I found it pretty, tr like, almost every time I had to be very careful to be on the right character, which was yes, frustrating. I agree with that. Sometimes and it felt like what the other person was doing also could change what you were doing. And yeah. so accidentally you would be on a different character. And know? to get to the character, I would click on them on the map. But then sometimes... You should be you, clicking their icons on the left. Yeah, I know. I figured that out eventually. I was using the hotkey eventually. <laughs> because you could accidentally press a grid on the I map and then move. Yep. And I did that a couple of times there before I was go. like, I got to start using the hotkeys. Yeah, that's, um, a, that's kind of a control. But there was drama about that where it was like, you moved him. And I was like, no, I didn't. And clearly one of us did something wrong. There and was, was a little like drama. Stuff. But uh, otherwise, it's a. It didn't cause a lot of stress. Communication, just no, like no, no. Good strategy based. <laughs> yeah. Talking. Yeah. Um. The writing at certain times was really strange to me. Like, it felt a little like um still stilted. It was like, strange. Yeah. Because it credits the authors, I was kind of sure it was just bringing in like players' things that they made. No. Like, the writing was really weird. But no, it isn't doing that. I know. But there were times where I was like, I don't know if I'm just crazy or if this is English. <laughs> am I having a stroke right now? <laughs> like, what am I reading? Um, I, I did like some of it. I thought I think it's pretty funny. It grew on me once yeah. we like we met that blacksmith guy and like we're, mm -hmm. he's telling us Elmo. stories. Is his name Elmo? Elmo or something? <laughs> I this game's good. Yeah, I think it was fun. 
I think a lot of people, especially if you're like a D and D like kind of lover, you would really enjoy playing this game with a friend. Yeah. Uh, so the reason I wanted to check this out is someone referenced it in relation to Divinity Original Sin mm. Two, which, as you know, as a saves together stand. We never shut up about it. We don't shut up about that game. So I did have a little too high expectations coming in. I wanted my my life changed the way that game I changed my life. I had the exact expectations going in because I watched you had seen someone it. play yeah, this, smart. and I was like, "This is funny." I like I like the cute character interactions. So yeah. I like that you can like say you're a rival or you're you're romantic or you're just friends, and then that kind of changes the dialogue. I think is cool. The random nature of the storytelling, like how it picks random things to happen, great because yeah. You just don't know. You might get crow person. You might <laughs> you get might, tree uh, person. You, you might, might get star person. I love it. Uh, do you have a rating you want to give it, or do you have do you have anything else to say before we? Mm, no, I think we said a lot. Um, Did we? Uh, huh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've said enough. Is what I'm trying to say. Um, score. Uh, la la la. A. I got an A. That's what I said too. <gasps> The A's have it. The A it is. So, Do you know I only think of that when you tell me on this podcast what score to give it? That's fine. I give it no th- for no thought before it. I mean, I think about the game, but I yeah. But I, I, I like to have it off the cuff. That's so. fine. I have it written down, but it's not like I... I go with my gut. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm doing. And then you go with your brain, and together we come up with the perfect score. Yep. That's how I see it. <laughs> I think it's an A because... It's an A. It's very, very good. Yeah. It doesn't reach the echelon of like I'm echelon never gonna forget S this game. Tears. Yeah. Right. Like, it doesn't. But it's but it's so it's so good. It has a lot of unique things that I think make it special and worth trying. Yeah. So there you go. Um. Amazing. That's, amazing. Uh, Wilder Myth. You should definitely play it. There are hats. Uh, by hats, I mean. There's no helmets, yo. By hats. You equip a helmet and the the hats. helmet don't come on. By hats, I don't mean hats. Do you know that? I know what you mean, but I'm just saying. Cosmetics. You don't. We do. We will not award it the plus because there is not a hat. So when I when you say hats, we really need actual hats. No, I. I'm, is this like a TF2 joke? No, but also yes, a little bit. <laughs> okay. No, I'll, I'm just mad that if you equip a helmet, you don't get a helmet. What on helmets are you even talking about? Exactly. What the there hell? Were no There's no helmets. helmets. There are helmets. You would definitely be equipping. helmets. No, there were no helmets. For sure, there were helmets because there was a mod you could turn on that was like show helmets. What? Someone had to make the mod to like cover your face. It's because well, so much stuff happens you, to your character. Throughout this game, I don't remember ever getting a helmet item. Okay. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Maybe we didn't. But anyways. There was like belts and necklaces and you could see all that. And that at least changes it, but that doesn't count. Capes. There was capes. That doesn't count. <laughs> okay. But it's awesome to get capes and wings. I and think the faces are necessary and that's why. It's, so <laughs> and this is just a joke, but. The hats thing is just a joke. But the game is so important to the changing of the characters that it it can't get a plus because of that. That is the game. Yeah. You know, it's not like a bonus. It's the game. Yeah. Wilderness and A. Let's uh, take it on home. Grace, I was going to say this is the part where you tell me where we can tell them where they can find us about the on treasure the internet, trove. but I forgot about the treasure trove. Grace, do you have a buried treasure indie game highlight week of the month? I yeah, I do. I, I found this game <laughs> today called Witchtastic, which is a funny name, but essentially it's a game on Steam developed by Red for Games. That's a two to four co-op player game about brewing and delivering magic potions, and it's very inspired by overcooked it like think okay. about overcooked but you're a witch making potions and you know what the game is all right um it does have hats oh it's a witch game so it better they it's also has hats. a couch co-op for for if you're playing on the it's, it's on the computer but there's local co-op and online co-op so i have a question yeah why are people uh this is rude and i'm sorry <laughs> Why are people just making question. overcooked? Every time Craig says I have a question, I know it's going to be rude because uh, he doesn't. <laughs> Why do people ask. just keep making overcooked? Because like, overcooked um, was just play fun. overcooked. Yeah, but people want more overcooked, and There's I actually like overcooked too. Now I actually like the idea of making different kinds of overcooks. I yeah, think that's I'm funny. not totally against it. I just think it's funny. It's like. Guys, that exists. But that happens with every genre, doesn't it? Now that, now yeah, that I think about it, there's a million on. Stardew Valleys. There's a million Harvest Moons. Everyone likes a twist on something that is familiar and fun to them. It's smart. It's like, give them what they want, but make it a little different. Right. That's what everything, Every that's how stories are like too, you know? 
we all love dragons, but how are we going to spice up this dragon story? They're the dragons boats. can talk. They can talk. The dragons are boats and they turn into... The boats turn into dragons. I love that book series, dude. Robin Hobb. <laughs> Robin Hobb. Dude, I, I'm just stunned by that. that what, a, what a high concept idea. The boats <laughs> talk to you. They're ma- You know, this is a total spoiler for this series because oh, you don't bad. find this out. But the boats can speak. They're made of special wood. And it turns out the wood is made from dragon eggs. Okay, no more because that sounds and awesome. And then they so turn you're, you're into gonna encourage people to, yeah, t- No spoilers. <laughs> So the whole thing was a spoiler. The fact that the I didn't know are that because that's the only thing you ever told me about the book. So I thought that was just like, dude, it's that's the such point. a sick revelation. It honestly sends me. We love a high concept dragon book, and by yeah, the high end, concept, they're boats. Wow. <laughs> okay, excuse me. That's high fucking concept. I got one. Read they're the book. airplanes. <laughs> yes dude you get inside the dragon the dragon can enlarge he, he its body you. he bores he you. you he bore- <laughs> He mouthful modes you the dragon mouthful modes people he's the cat bus okay the cat bus is a vor situation but i can I see dragons working for that too yeah like get on it dragon bus yeah and that's essentially what the boat thing is too it, it could sp- i mean you're kind of kind of like voring but you're on top of it yeah you can go inside a boat Bad dragon bang bus. Take that out. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that. All right. All right, Grace. Which, which test? Where do we? Uh, oh, which testing? Right. Wait, wait, I wait, talked wait, about wait, it. That's wait, enough. Wait, that was wait, all wait, you wait, wait, to wait, say. Wait, 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 wait. I had asked you in the treasure trove segment. Start trying to relate the game to what we played, and I want to try to figure out the puzzle. And I think I figured it out. They both start with W. You Wilderman got it. And which How did you figure? No, I. <laughs> I, no, I, I think that's going to be too hard. I chose it. What do you mean? I no, actually you actually have do a... want to do that? I thought you'd think that was I do stupid. it every time. I can always find a connection between literally anything. Okay, this one's obvious. Witches and mages and magic. Because the mystic was my favorite class. Yeah. That's why. So I chose something a little more magical. Wonderful. Uh, Grace, do we have a website? We have a website, yeah. Holy crap. Good, good, good. It's good. It's called savestogether.club. And if you go there, you can find links to our social media and all our episodes and a list of our co-op factors. So many things, and so you, many resources. You know what else you can find there? It's brand spanking new. It wasn't there last episode. We set up a Steam curator page, and anytime we do an episode and the game is available on Steam, we will put it on there. It'll be an informational review thing. It's not a review. It's not a, it's not a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Dude, Craig is a curator on Steam. He gets free uh, extreme sports games all the time. And sometimes he'll get a free sports game. They're never extreme sports games. So <laughs> I, I was run... just going to say, sometimes he'll <laughs> get a free game and be like, I run this a relatively successful <laughs> like, curator page called Heck Yeah Extreme Sports Yeah, games. but he's so specific about what an extreme sport is. He's like, he's like so well, judgmental. Dude, they sent me like a geopolitical MMO. Okay. What is extreme? But there There's was no one that was sports E, and you were like, oh. Not extreme enough, <laughs> if you ask me. I'm I'm specifically looking for like BMX, skateboarding, skiing, right? Yeah. And, but they'll send me like this is um aggressive soccer. It's like okay, that's but I would put it on the list. I would not. I'm a lot less, you know, <laughs> strict than you are, but, I guess. But I just I was like, well, this actually is a decent way to like show people. What I should games be a curator of mother like games. You absolutely should do that. In fact, let's set that up. It's not hard, and it's it's a cool little service. It's fun to do. Force me to do it. I'm just kidding. I would do it. It's fun. <laughs> I'll sm- I'll make it if you want. You just got to tell me what games to put on there. It's a little. You want to talk about Steam curator stuff? <laughs> no, I, I can do a whole podcast. I'm it's sure a little you weird. could. Um, but anyways, check that out. Steam saves together. There's a link on SavesTogether.club right to this curator page. Follow yep. it. Um, check it out. It's Love kind of it. like we we call it our catalog, co-op game catalog. I uh, came up with that name. That's a great name. <sighs> Thank you. I love alliteration. So, and there's also recommended games on this site as well. Yes, which is also very important. Send that to people. When they're like, I'm looking for a co-op game, you can just send them that list. You don't True. have to do any work. You can just give them my number. I'll, they can call yeah, me Yeah, text me. It's 555. <laughs> uh, tell them, tell them, they have to tell them everything about them, their history. I'm like a therapist. Give me their co-op top games. seven current co-op games. <laughs> and then I will, it's like, yeah, a exactly. Co-op, two co-op games they did not like. And mm-hmm. from there, we'll be able to just punch in the right direction. I need to know what their partner's um, gaming skill is like, what yeah. games they like. Are they noob? Are they noob? So what are the levels? <laughs> noob, rookie, intermediate, Game, and then gamer. gamer. 
and, and then, then god pro gamer. god ga- <laughs> pro gamer and then god gamer and then god gamer but the thing is god gamer is actually not necessarily better than pro gamer no it's not it's actually worse god it's gamer actually actually like you just kind of did something by accident if you tell me your partner's a god gamer i'll just hang up because i'll know there's nothing i can find there's nothing i can for do you. for you because you're a god <laughs> Because, no, because a god gamer's like, I only play Dark Souls on super hard and I'm blindfolded with one arm. And I it's played like, it on a DDR now pad what co op game could I even find for this person? You know what I mean? Struggling. Exactly. Struggling. No, the game's struggling. Yeah. Yeah. I said exactly because, yeah, I agree. I thought you were saying you were struggling <laughs> to come up with it. Yeah. Remember when we completely missed the title? Yeah, it was really <laughs> sad of us. Last episode, guys, I'm sorry, okay? It's called Struggling. We should have really. Really should have figured that out. I just got an email. <laughs> Grace just got an email, so that I think means that's, we gotta get out of here. We gotta get out of here. It's the weekend, but she's working. Goodbye. Bye.